Hey, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for being here. I've got a very exciting guest today, somebody that's been extremely influential in my own life. I found her work a very long time ago and then rediscovered it recently, knowing that she was coming on the podcast. And her name is Byron Katie. In 1986, at the bottom of a 10-year spiral into depression, rage, and self-loathing, Byron Katie woke up one morning to a state of constant joy that has never left her. She realized that when she believed her stressful thoughts, she suffered, but that when she questioned them, she didn't suffer, and that this is true for every human being. Her simple yet powerful process of inquiry is called the work. The work consists of four questions and the turnarounds we're going to talk about today, Mm -hmm. which are a way of experiencing the opposite of what you believe. When you question a thought, you see around it to the choices beyond suffering. Katie has been bringing the work to millions of people for more than 30 years. Her public events, weekend workshops, five-day intensive, nine-day school for the work, and 28-day residential turnaround house have brought freedom to people all over the world. By and create Katie's books include the best-selling Loving What Is, I Need Your Love, Is That True? A Thousand Names for Joy, and A Mind at Home with Itself. For more information, you can find Byron at thework.com. And welcome, Byron. Thank you so much for coming here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to, to spend a little time with you this morning. Yes, I'm... In, you know, I'm talking to you on, on video. So if you, if you guys are listening to this, I really encourage you to head over to the YouTube channel and, and watch the video because um, Byron's just absolutely beautiful. I was just telling her this, like she's 77. And I tell you, the work is coming through this woman and it just goes to show that what's on the inside certainly comes out on the outside in beauty. So uh, Byron, please just take us back to that time of not not being so happy (laughs) and i mean you were you checked yourself into a halfway house for women because you were suffering that bad could you tell us a little bit about what was happening during that time and who you were at that time it was uh, it was toward the tail end of a 10-year downward spiral of depression and agoraphobia set in it was um and compulsive overeating and um pills and it was a a life lived in my bedroom and it was um the depression was i was so suicidal it was horrible i don't ever ever want if i can do anything about it i don't ever want anyone to suffer that kind of depression and and I, I many people are, mm-hmm. and and I can even I don't know how it could get any worse because I would wake up in the morning and and notice that I was still alive and just curse life, <laughs> just you know fall into that state immediately of depression. It was horrible. And, and you then, had kids and were married too. Yes, and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, not fun. And um, one day as I lay sleeping on the floor, because my my self-esteem was so low, my self-loathing was so strong, I didn't believe I deserved a bed to sleep in. And it was, it would take me days to even bathe or brush my teeth. It was horrible existence and, and very overweight, 200 pounds, a little more, I think. And, and, um, As I lay asleep that particular morning on the floor, a cockroach crawled over my foot and I opened my eyes and all the suffering was gone. I saw in that moment, it was, I woke up with such a start that the ego, the mind didn't have time to fill in that space. And in that gap, in that place, I saw how my world was created and, and it was like, why didn't someone tell me it was so simple, but I began to laugh and it was the most authentic laugh. It was, it it was unrecognizable that without identification, it was like the first thing that was born 
in, in the world out of this, this new life that it, it, it wasn't a new life given to me. It was the old one as though it had been relaced, erased. And then when I saw the cause of the, of, of the world, the cause of suffering, I began to share it in the world. And because the shift was so radical, even my husband would, would move through the house saying, what did you do with her? Where did she go? I didn't marry you. This isn't fair. You know, it's, it was such a radical, radical shift. And um, I call it the work. And I, I was shown in that gap how the world was created. And um, it's, it's not a big mystery. Um, the, some Buddhist taught me um, just recently, really, what they call the Four Noble Truths. And it's what I experienced on the floor, the, the way it sounds to me. But the first noble truth is there is suffering in the world. And I think we can all agree to that. We've all experienced suffering. And the second noble truth is there is a cause for this suffering. And that's what I saw on the floor. It was what I was thinking and believing that was the cause of all mm. my suffering. When I saw how true that was, that brought on the laughter. It was like, what? And then that third noble truth is there is a way out of this suffering. And I saw that on the floor. I saw and then I was released. And then the last noble truth, the fourth one, is here's how. And then people, people from all um, religions, you know, that here's how. It's Buddhism. It's Christianity. It's, and for me, it's inquiry. Because what I saw on the floor, I could talk all night and day. And it's not as helpful as, as it doesn't give people the opportunity I had. And so I give them these four questions and then they tap into it the way I did on the floor and see the same things. And Karen, you've done enough work. You understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it is entirely freeing. And it's not easy because our identifications, the ego is entirely threatened. Every time we do the work, every time we, we identify um, a complaint, let's say that we're thinking, we write the complaint down and then we just sit in those four questions and then look at opposites and we're released. Mm -hmm. If we really meditate the, these questions, you know, it requires a meditative state. Yeah, yeah. And the first question is, is what I'm believing true? And there are a lot of beliefs going on in, in this time of, of, of being quarantined and, and locked in with our families, locked in alone, and, um, and living with our states of mind. So for me, it's, an, it's, it's, it's just an amazing opportunity to sit with ourselves and meditate in what we're thinking and believing that is keeping us in a, in, in a life of, of um, everything from self-loathing. We could say on a, on a scale from one to 10, whatever the suffering is, um, it can, you know, we can, I was living at, a, at an eight to 10, 10 being the, the most painful. Anyway, it was enough for me. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I could look back and count all my blessings, but they weren't visible to me then. No. In looking back, do you feel now that that was God coming to you, the universe, just a knowing? Do you relate it to anything? Do you connect with anything? Uh, that's what I connected with. Yeah. That is the what I connected with entirely benevolent. My life became so, it, it, it went from, from bitter and and self-centered to to free and giving and loving and compassionate and and living out of a a, a kind of understanding that um, 
that continues to blow my mind and mm -hmm. even brings tears to my eyes even sharing it with you mm -hmm. the gratitude oh my it was like a gratitude. curtain it was, that's what i can imagine in my head it was like somebody drew back the curtain of in your inside your brain and said yeah. actually here's what's really going on and yeah. you could understand it yeah yeah you know, it's, yeah. it's like i could um let's say i could look at someone before the work and and think um they don't like me or they think there's something wrong with me or they're cruel or they i know what they're thinking or too tall too short too fat too thin too pretty too too homely too all of these things that, that we don't do it on purpose but we just throw that onto an object we'll say a person and then we believe our thoughts and we really think that's who that person is but that fourth question you know who who am i without my story what i put on that object that person mm -hmm. or myself or yourself yeah and who am i without that story and oh my goodness people get to see what i saw on the floor they do yeah and it the concept is really scary if you've never even had somebody to say this to you. And I remember very clearly there was years ago when I heard it from somebody where it was, you are not your thoughts and you create your perception of your reality. So you can choose suffering or you can choose happiness. And well, that know, was huge for me. I was like, oh my, what do I do with that? Because yeah. it blows up your reality completely. It, and it's been yeah. a very long process since. It, and it was yes. coming to the work that made me just go, oh my gosh, that takes the pressure off trying to figure out a way to teach this to people and a way for me to constantly and easily apply it to my life so I can constantly grow. So I really want to... Let's go, let's walk through each of the questions so people can really understand what we're talking about because it's so simple because what is hearing it sounds confusing and sounds like, what are you guys talking yeah. about? <laughs> so uh, what is the concept when we look at, um, at this pandemic, for example, yes. and seeing uh, people say cooped up in your, in, in your home or apartment, um, wherever you're sheltered. And what is a common complaint that you've heard? I've heard, um, I just read on somebody's Facebook yesterday, it was, I'm dreadfully afraid, I've got anxiety, I've, keep, I've kept my kids in my house for a month, I can't go out, I have to go to the grocery store and I'm so scared. Okay, um, so let's look at, I can't go out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't leave, I can't, I can't go out. I'm trapped here. Okay, let's look at I'm trapped here. Yeah. So the first question is, so you imagine yourself in your home in that situation where you were trapped, where you were thinking and feeling that way, and you imagine yourself there in that time and place. And then you hold that, you anchor there in your mind's eye, you meditate in that situation. So be there now and you're trapped inside is it true what was it you can't go out you yeah i mean i think i think out. the whole world probably thinks that right now that yeah i can't go out i'm yeah. afraid to go out right so you can't go out is it true no no our minds and and our minds can go well they say we can't the governor says i can't the dun, 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 the dun, 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 and it can but then just go under that just notice is it true you can't go out and drop in more deeply because we're looking each one of us for our truth not what the authorities say yes we look at that but now we're sitting in something that it, it's like this is where it stops it stops with ourselves so is it true i can't go out and then when you meditate in that question it could be yes that you see it could be no that you see if it's yes 
continue to ask, is it true? Can I really know that it's true, that I can't go out? Is it true? And yes is equal to no. This, there is no tricks in this work. It's just you with you. So when, when you just look for the truth, if yes is your authentic truth, that's it. You move to the next question. If it's no, you rest in that as well. You move to the next question. So the next question, notice in that situation how you react. What happens when you believe the thought? You can't go out. So now you're meditating in that time and place where you were thinking and believing it. Maybe the kids are screaming or maybe you're out of food or maybe, you know, whatever those circumstances were. We're meditating there now. Witnessing how do you react? What happens when you believe the thought? So in that, begin to get in touch with the emotions you were feeling then. Get in touch with them now. And let them feel you. Just be with them. Get, get, get comfortable in them, no matter how, what the emotions were. Just allow them. Get in touch with it. And then notice any thoughts of past, future that were going on in that situation like the past where you, where you were free to come and go and, and then you see the future where you're gonna be locked in here for who knows how long, stuck in this situation. And how do you react? What happens when you believe the thought? You can't go out. The emotions, the past and future running. Just experience that. And as you look at those past, future, images that were going on, you begin to see that that movie is the cause of your emotions. That dream world of the not now, the not now. And they're so subtle, you don't know that they're going on at the time, so now we're revisiting the cause of our suffering. And then as we witness that, we just move to the last question. In that situation, who would I be without the thought I can't go out? Now that doesn't mean it's not a valid thought. And this isn't meant to it's just a question that each of us have the ability to go in and, and, and see ourselves in that situation, how upset we were, how frightened we were, how frustrated we were, how angry we were. And we can see maybe we compulsively overate, we went to the refrigerator, that we can see how we react when we believe the thought. And then we just look at us in that situation Without the thought, I can't go out, who am I? And in that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at me and in my mind's eye, all is well. And I'm not just saying that, you know, I'm, I'm in that situation. I can see what I was seeing now out the window that I didn't even know I was seeing then. I can see the sky, I can even see a tree. And I can see that I'm actually standing in the kitchen. And yeah, the kids are crying, all, you know, whatever's going on. But without my story, am I okay? Without the thought, I can't go out, am I okay? Yeah. And, and we just meditate in these. People who are not meditators learn to meditate when they come to this work. I bet. And, and then we, we turn the thought around. It's the, the, the four questions. And then we, we try on opposites just to see, do they fit? Do they not? So I can't go out, turn around. I can go out. Yeah, there are no chains 
holding me. There are no locks on my door. I can go out. I just don't want to catch the virus. I don't want to give it to my family. This is an act of kindness. I can go out. I'm not a cat. No one's making me stay here. I'm not chained up. And even if they chain me, after sitting through these four questions, I can see that I'm free to travel anywhere in the world, anytime my mind takes me there. Mm -hmm. So I can go out. And then just to meditate in that kind of freedom that we still have. But we don't want to be sicker than we already are. And you know, there, there are different ways of being sick. One is emotionally, spiritually, physically. And I will tell you in my experience, and this may be stretching it for your listeners, but uh, freedom is a state of mind and prison is a state of mind, the, that internal prison. And for me, this was the way out. Mm -hmm. I know I just had that thought as a turnaround on that. I am locked in, in my own brain, not actual life. I'm locked inside with those thoughts mm -hmm. that I'm locked inside. So excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think of, and I'm sure you've run across this so much, Byron, is people's addiction to the negative thoughts, to those self-limiting thoughts. How do we see that? How do we get past that? Because a lot of people, when they're advantage. faced with it. Yes, to take advantage of those addictive thoughts, the mm -hmm. ones that cause anxiety and depression, to, take, to, to identify them and write them down and go to byronkatie.com and do the work. Yeah, And on Instagram, I have um, um, a, um, um, a thing flowing out where it's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's the first one. I call it one, two, three. And the first one is you, you just write down your complaints as you notice. And then on, 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 that's one. And then two, you move it to a one belief at a time worksheet. And Mary, whom you just met, has done such an excellent job um, producing this on, on, oh, yeah. on, on Instagram. And, and, and so you move one of your complaints over to the one belief at, at a time and you work it. And then on, on, of, on the third one of one, two, three, she's moving out our um, uh, the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. And that is where you can move that I complain, you've just worked on the one belief, over to um, a judge and neighbor worksheet. And you can see all of the, 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 all of the rungs of the ladder that hold up the concept. And you can work that too. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's um, if you don't want to wait for three of the one, two, three on Instagram, you can go to uh, byronkatie.com and it's all there. It's mm -hmm. all there. It's all free. And, and it is if people that want something to do, um, you can. Yes, it's such and, and, a great and, time to do it. It saved my, saved my life mm -hmm. and the lives of, Millions. I guess, and of others. My email is just so full of, of um, people who are <sighs> grateful for, that I can't even take credit for it came to me freely and um and it goes out of each one of us as we become sane again mm -hmm. Byron as women age we go through so much physical shift and with that comes a spiritual shift and I work with so many women that are in perimenopause into menopause who suddenly start to struggle with a lot of aspects of their life. And I, I'm not sure what it, I don't know if it's, I'm sure it's a collectively, it has to do with our hormones shifting and giving us a different perception of things. But I also think it's the first time in women's lives where we, you know, we've had the kids, we've, we were either married or we've tossed the guy by now. We're, you know, we've usually found our job or career 
And so it's the first time that we look inward and we say, what do I want in life? And a lot of women really struggle with that and how to grow. And we fight it because we're being told that we need to stay young and youthful and our body starts changing and our minds and spirits start changing. What advice do you have that how can we use the work to better get through these years? Well, I would, um, I would, anytime I'm bothered, I would identify what I'm thinking and believing. And there's a theme running. And you've named one. I'm, I'm too old. I'm losing my looks. I'm, I'm, um, my skin is changing. You know, and there's a theme running. And um, then the emotions would be depression, um, everything from depression, self-loathing to just, um, just um, losing a sense of security that that, that um, we're not used to and uh, around our bodies and looks. But um, anytime you're feeling any of that, notice what you're thinking and believing, and put it on the judge your neighbor worksheet, and and. Um, and judge your body and and then question it using those four questions and and trying on the turnarounds but um usually something happens that brings that on you know we look in the mirror and are just at our skin and the whole thing just erupts just the way um and it's that way with it's that way with everything with a person walks into the room and our mind attacks the person maybe um and blames them for this or that but there's a theme running and simple directions on the on byronkatie.com mm -hmm. is there ever a time where it is someone else's fault so when we're doing the work, how we, you know, you talk about relationships where it comes to, you know, oh, my husband doesn't listen or my neighbor makes me angry because he does X, Y, Z. Is there ever a time where you can point the finger? You know, <laughs> I don't the, think so. You know, the ego has to point the finger, you know, and, and then eventually it reaches a, a kind of high pitch. Then it comes back and attacks me for attacking them. So, um, but I would judge that person on paper and, and, and it doesn't mean they didn't do what they did or they didn't say what they said that was hurtful. Maybe they can afford that, but I can't because those are the causes of depression, depression, low self-esteem, esteem and addictions. So we, we feel guilt and that's the, the breeding ground for all addiction. So yeah, they said it. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, did. they can afford it. But I am in trouble when I give them the look even or fight back or argue or belittle any of that. We can't get away with it. We experience guilt. So what I do is I judge that person on paper. Mm -hmm. I take my judgments that I was believing about them then. I put them on that judge and neighbor worksheet. And then I questioned them. And, and again, are they ever guilty? They'll have to answer that question. I heard what I heard. I witnessed what I witnessed. It's what I was, let's say if it were my husband, it's what I was thinking and believing about him that was upsetting me. And I've, like, like you, Karen, I've never found an exception to that. You know, I heard what you said, and I'm just putting it that strongly on top of it. Um, it's what I say and do that hurts me, what I'm thinking and believing that hurts me. My thoughts about that person are the cause of my suffering, not what that person said or did. Mm -hmm. And that person, Karen, that brings me back to the work and this deep discovery, this internal journey, journey that you were, that you were speaking to, you know, we want to be wiser and better as we age. And this is the way to do it. I have been other realized. Now let me be self realized and understand that what I'm thinking and believing could use a little work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it really is, is, hard as it is to look at some of this stuff and reveal it, 
it really is that easy to go through this process. I'm it, and you do talk about like the people that are, you know, what about if you do get stuck and you just, and you can't get through it, that you just have to be patient and keep doing the work. Yes. And you know, also when you, when you go to the website, there is a, um, a, a helpline that's completely free. And you don't have to say your name or where you're from. It's completely free. Go to byroncatie.com, fill in a worksheet, and um, then call the helpline, and they'll support you to walk through that worksheet. And 100% Amazing. Charge. It always has been, and those volunteers are, they're, they're so dear. They'll just, they'll just stay with you and support you until you can do it yourself. Mm-hmm. In your book, um, Loving What Is, you give a ton of examples of actual people that you've worked with and the conversations um, of bringing them through the work with their, uh, with, with what they've written down as far as what are their biggest stressors at mm-hmm. that time, who's stressing them out. That I found really helped because you can see yourself in them. Like you say, you say there are no new stories, they're all recycled. <laughs> No new stressful stories, all recycled. <laughs> it's all the same things. It's the, the, what people talk about, what people complain about, it's all, it's all very similar, isn't it? It, it is the cause of boredom. You know, right. same old complaints over and over and over, and we don't think of it that way, but the, the ego just owns us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just spoke with um, Don Jose Ruiz, you probably, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the four agreements, his dad, Miguel Ruiz wrote that book. So he, he was on the show and he just wrote a book called the wisdom of shamans. And it's so interesting because he talks about this exact thing, but in a completely different way in the sense of we're all in a dream. And when you wake up is when you get to really start living. Yes. And it's so true. And and the work helps people to wake up. Well, it's entirely direct. It is oneself with oneself in a in a stand down, really. It's, and it's um, it's um, it's it's it can be painful, and everyone's not ready for it because it's it's boy, it is close up and personal. It's a microscopic view into ourselves and how how uh, the cause of suffering in our life. And once we see it something magical happens. We're free. Mm-hmm. We're free. And we get freer and freer and freer and freer. And meaning kinder, 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 wiser, wiser, more compassionate. It's a it's a practice. It's a practice in meditating on what we're thinking and believing that create this world of depression or freedom mm-hmm. from that. I'm going to go through the four questions here again, just so people can hear them. Um, And you can touch in on each of them if you'd like. So the first question you have to ask is, is it true? So whatever your thoughts are, your judgments on somebody else, on yourself. So we'll say it's, well, what I hear all the time is that, you know, I'm overweight or I'm sick. I've got this health issue. So you sit with it and you ask, is it true? Correct. And for, and for beginners, I, I uh, suggest they don't um, question, that they don't fill in a worksheet on themselves. First, right. They fill, on a, fill it in on someone else in their life mm-hmm. um, because the ego is just too invested to judge ourselves. We need a little work on the outside world before we tackle that. Yeah. And because you say, be mean. Like mm-hmm. you, just, you put it down and don't hold back. Yeah, yeah. If the thoughts are mean about them at the time, they belong mean on paper. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, that was very hard for me to do because I'm I'm not a mean person, yeah. and so at first I'm treading lightly with myself on a piece of paper. It was so funny. I'm trying to like trick myself, and I'm thinking, okay, well, who can I think about here? And I was like, okay, well, we'll talk about my husband, right? Because we can always pick on the husbands. And so- I'm closest to you is always- close, Always, right? So I'm trying to be nice. Like, well, sometimes he doesn't listen. And <laughs> I was like, okay, Karen, you got to be a little bit more mean than this. Yeah, because when we're, when, when we're believing they're not listening, 
that's what we put on the worksheet. Maybe it's two days later, but that's still what we put. We don't con ourselves out. Yeah, I was thinking he's he's not listening to me. So we write it down and question yeah. it. Yes. And you can write, you just kind of, I think it's kind of a brain dump. You just write, you don't think no, about what the next step is. You just take it out of your brain, be, be vindictive if you have to be vindictive, be mean, put your if thoughts I down. Was vindictive, it belongs on paper. If I wasn't vindictive, then um, whatever I was thinking, believing that belongs on paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real deal, the real thing. Mm -hmm. And then like you said, it can be yes or no. It's not, we're not trying to trick you. <laughs> and second question is. Another way to, to say it is, mm -hmm. uh, don't try to trick yourself. Mm -hmm. No one doing this but you. There's no one yeah. around but you. And, and that worksheet, you know, they, you just, you go there and you push print. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just push print and it's yours. And we also have one that you can fill in on the work on the on the website yeah so the second question can you absolutely know it's true and so this is just reconfirming and just really trying to dig deeper on whether or not it's true yeah just taking another look just another opportunity to to look again not to change your mind but just to settle in meditating in that situation and time it doesn't matter if you were 10 years old and now you're 80 Mm -hmm. that's what we're, that's the situation we're meditating in as we fill in the worksheet three is how do you react what happens when you believe that thought i think that one's very important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you witness did i raise my voice did i say unkind things did i and we're looking as as we look at how i react when i believe the thought Mm -hmm. We're really sitting in the things that we need to admit, apologize for, and make right as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we just overlook them otherwise, and we just become more depressed, more depressed, meaner, meaner, more self-centered. It's, it's, it's a spiral. More self-destructive. Yeah. The, well, the ego, it's, you know, it's, it, it's life depends on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fourth question who would you be without the thought i ask myself that all the time yeah mm -hmm. Boy, it's, it's 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 such a powerful thing to do this a few times and just live out of a state of of um of some great um wise person said that an unquestioned what was it? Um, well, I can say an unquestioned mind is a life of suffering. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the quote now. Mm -hmm. But that's a good quote. <laughs> Either way, that's fantastic. Yeah. Who would you be without the thought? And that's really just thinking, we'll talk about women that are struggling to lose weight, that don't like their body, that are constantly shaming themselves. I, I really put it towards struggling with health issues, you know, chronic migraines, things like this, struggling with weight. I, I really put that to that. And I thought, who would I be if I wasn't always struggling and fighting it and trying to figure it out? And who would I be? And it was like, wow, I would be, I would just get to live my life without all this stress and worry and pressure that's constantly weighing on me. How is that? That how are those thoughts serving me? They're not. And we don't even know ourselves without those tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're just like newborns when we come out of this work. Yeah. And I, re I, I think I remember the quote now: "An unquestioned life is not worth living." Mm. Love it. And then finally, the turnaround, the turn, the thought around. That one's very powerful. I find that's the hardest one for me personally, because sometimes it's, you can't understand how do I turn this around when it doesn't have to, when you think it doesn't have to do with you necessarily. Yeah, that's why it's, it's um, I always suggest judge someone else. If you really want to know about you, right. judge someone else on paper because those are your thoughts. So it's all about you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're judging someone else, you're, you have the same judgment on you. 
And I think that's really hard for people. But if I am thinking he is this, he is that, and he is this, and he is that, um, those thoughts are all about me. Those are coming out of me. They're my thoughts. So it's not about that person. It's what I'm thinking and believing about that person. Mm-hmm. So to, um, to judge someone else, it's all about us. Yeah. So my final thing for you that I couldn't help but think about this morning, I thought, you know, she's 77. You've been doing this since you were 43. This is when you went. And interesting that it was 43 that when this came to you too, because that is when women start to shift into this yeah. hormonal shift. Boy, 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 yeah. <laughs> good timing, good timing, Byron. <laughs> oh, <God. That> <laughs> yeah, and I, and I just had to think to myself, looking back on the woman that you were prior to that day, would you have ever thought or dreamed that this is where you would be at 77? I couldn't have. No. I couldn't have. I didn't have a reference. What a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Very meant to be all the suffering because it brought you to this. Yeah. You can see that. And now you get to share it with the world and have been. So thank you for your work and your continued work. She said prior to this going on air, she's like, I'm going to do this probably till my deathbed. So I appreciate that, Byron. It's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. And living, you know, living out of this, mind this we could say this brain when you love everything you think you love people you love life and it doesn't mean you have to be friends with everyone but Mm -hmm. love is the power it's it's uh, and we all have a right to to live out of that state of mind and so it's as simple as it as it turns out it's as simple as just noticing what I'm thinking and move those thoughts to paper and then question them with, with these uh, four questions and then turning it around to opposites, not to exchange one belief for another. That's not it. But just to try it on like a new pair of shoes, you try them on before you pay for them and walk out of the store. Just try them on. Maybe they fit. Maybe they don't. Yes. Yeah. And you will be very surprised at what's going to happen. It's quite... It's very, very, very powerful. If you can get it and you can just do what she's saying and go put yourself through these questions and put these things through those questions, you have the potential to really radically shift your life and for a better life. You know, on ByronKay.com, there are videos of me doing the work with people. Oh, good. Okay. And and people can just sit in those. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, like I said, for me, that was, it really helped to hear you bringing people through it. Your book is, does a great job of explaining each of the questions in more detail. So um, you can find the book on Amazon, Loving What Is, uh, and you've got a couple other ones too. This was great. Great place to start out. And then like she said, it's all free on her website. So you can go to in and print them out and start today. And what a better, what better timing than right now when you've got lots of time on your hands it's being just inside your house. Older. People that want to get free, sometimes we're, we're, we have to be locked up, I guess. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think this is a beautiful time. I think that this, people really have the opportunity right now to, to, to get to know themselves. We're not busy. We don't have to go anywhere. This is your time to dig in. And it, that's great. Connect with your kids. Connect with your family members. Yeah. It can it can really shift who you are if you can look at it in a different light. I just heard from a friend in um, in um, in Turkey in Istanbul, wow. and um, she says she's really enjoying her lockup. Mm-hmm. A um, lot of work to do from her head and in her house. So. Yeah. I feel this exactly the same way. I think this has been so great. <laughs> Even my husband and I were both like, this has been so nice. <laughs> like, like, don't have to go anywhere. I don't have anything to do. I can work from home. Like, yeah, but yes. The problem that arises, you know, blessings be, we have these questions to set us free. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for the conversation. Oh, it was a privilege, a pleasure. Thank you, Karen.